Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Baterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Rebecca Brumfield, a fellow massage therapist from the state of Louisiana. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We're live in the boot of the United States in the swamp lands. So I, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit different weather than you right now. You're in Baton Rouge. Uh, I've only ever been to New Orleans, which was is one of my all-time favorite trips that I've ever taken. It's such a there's good time. Definitely, yeah, there's definitely something magical about New Orleans, but we are a very, very special breed of people in this state, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been a, a therapist for over 10 years, and you operate Vita Pura Spa, and you also, which is where you do your clinical therapeutic practice, and you also coach and offer resources for spa and wellness business owners at Badass Body Workers. Yep, and I Thanks. am an aspiring uh, entrepreneur as well for another in Denver. So I definitely have my hands full, but everything like is full circle around massage and body work and health and wellness. Is that other endeavor out like fully outside of wellness and? No, so uh, it's, it's what I had uh, had it with you about a little bit earlier. It's converting my little um, school bus into a mobile wellness center or ah. mobile spa. I'm not quite sure what to call it yet, yeah. but uh, I especially think after COVID, you know, a lot more people are going mobile or they're downsizing. And that's what I recently decided to do in the past couple of months, given the very slim and rare chance I had to make this transition. I jumped on it in a heartbeat and it was the scariest thing to go from like seven, eight treatment rooms down to selling everything, moving all my stuff into storage and buying yeah. a bus to go mobile. So it's a new venture for me. It's going to be a challenge. So I kind of feel like I've, you know, been in this industry for 10 years when I'm starting over from ground up. So that's going to yeah. be, it's going to be really fun. That's cool. So yeah. how did you, how, can you give me a little origin story? How did you find your way into massage therapy to begin with? Sure. So I actually don't have a life changing moment. Um, I honestly, I. <laughs> yeah, I had a, a full scholarship to go to Louisiana State University and I decided to turn it down because they didn't have anything I really wanted to learn. And what I had wanted to do at the time was holistic wellness, herbal medicine. Um, there was nothing like that at LSU. So I decided that I was going to save up all my money from waiting tables and move to Austin to go to school to try to become a naturopath. And I did save up a lot of money. And I ended up not moving because somehow I ended up in a building to pick up a friend from work that happened to also be a massage school on the top floor. I had to wait for my friend to get off the work. I went upstairs and I'm like, massage $25. I want one. And they're like, have you ever had a massage before? And I'm like, no. And they said, this is a school like clinicals are tomorrow. Do you want to sign up? And I'm like, for school? Yeah. Let me look at the <laughs> curriculum. And then the next day I literally started school because it was the closest thing that I had to holistic wellness. And I figured it would be a great foundation for whenever I did decide to move on to become a naturopath, which uh, obviously my course has changed a little bit, but it was sort of random and spontaneous. I did not even know that massage existed, period. I didn't know that uh, there was even a school for it. Like my school 10 years ago was not very good at letting us know what the trades were. So I just jumped into it. I was like, yeah, this looks like fun. I'm interested in anatomy and self-care and wellness. So this is the closest I'm going to get being in Louisiana. I don't want to move to Texas just yet. And I'm still here 10 years later. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. So let's jump over to Louisiana for a second. What does it take to become licensed in that state? and to maintain one, uh, a license, as it were? Sure. So um, we require 500 hours to take the, uh, the MBLEX, but school is about 750 hours. And you just pass the MBLEX. You, um, if you work before you get your license, you can work under a professional license underneath another licensed therapist for a bit, like in most states. But uh, it's pretty cut and dry, like 500 hours, take your state exam and pass it. And uh, yeah. you your first year, you don't have to pay for your license, I believe, uh, last time I checked. Mm. And then the next year, or, or get CEUs, 12 hours of CEUs per year. And then the next year, you do have to pay a renewal fee. I know some states are every two years. Ours is every year, 12 CEUs, $125 to renew. And then if you're like me and own a, a brick and mortar business or have another therapist working with you, if it's more than just you, then you have to pay uh, for an establishment license as well. I see. Okay. Well, that seems pretty straightforward as far as doing that. So 
here we are now, finally in June of 2020. The shutdown carries on. Uh, I, it, where I happen to live in, in Oregon, my county is still not even announced a reopening plan. Oh wow! Yeah. So, so how did things unfold there for you? What's the what's the state of your state? Well, uh, hot, humid, <laughs> full of alligators. <laughs> We, um, we actually just started phase two yesterday and, uh, phase one, like, uh, hairstylists and nail salons could open and phase two day spas and tattoo shops can finally open and, you know, massage uh, people. So we just started that. Um, obviously, you know, we have to follow, we are, and I'm sorry, we don't have to do anything, but we are highly encouraged to follow all the guidelines, which of course, all the therapists I know are doing. But we just started phase two yesterday, so it's been less than 24 hours, and uh, therapists can only see, we can only see, uh, I think, either 25 or 50 percent capacity of people at the moment. So, I mean, we're, we're hands-on, one-on-one with people. So basically, if you see six clients a day, you have to go down to like two, you know, maybe three. So that's obviously a challenge for a lot of therapists, especially, since, uh, you know, a lot of us work with like geriatrics, and it's a whole new ball game. We're just trying to wrap our head around... That's interesting. Uh, it's strange to me that the capacity would apply. I can understand where there's groups of people and you want to limit the number of groups, yes. but you're thinking one person at a time. It's really, it's really weird. And then uh, the state board doesn't really provide guidelines for us. They're just saying keep up with what the mayor says and uh, not taking a lot of accountability for steering us in the right direction or being proactive. Right. With us and during phase one, a massage therapist could see people if they work for a chiropractor's office and for a bit, for like a hot second, maybe for a week, therapists could go mobile. And I'm like, how is that any work any better than, you know, just stepping into a day spa that is clean and sanitized? It's it's really it's really weird whenever the gov the federal government tells you one thing, the national boards give guidelines on another. Then the state operates on a whole different level. And then even if we're all clear, then we have to worry about stuff like our liability insurance, uh, new intake forms, and then, you know, all the extra equipment and stuff. It's definitely, definitely a challenge for us here in Louisiana, uh, especially New Orleans being one of the top cities that are showing like increased rates of, you know, COVID every single day. So yeah. it's... It's a challenge. It's so a challenge. Since phase but, one started there, did are the numbers up as far as the virus goes? Is it like? A, a, probably a little bit. I honestly am not going to lie. I don't keep up with the news a yeah, lot yeah. because yeah, it's hard. Um, at least, the, yeah, at least the numbers. I do keep up with my industry, obviously, because I know when I want to return to work. But yeah. uh, it's, it's just, yeah. it's very conflict. You know, people are very polarized here and it, it's definitely a lot of, uh, you have the clients that have very high fear and then you have the clients that are very low fear and just aren't really concerned at all. So you have to find that happy medium and you have to, you know, and a client that took you an hour is now going to take you three hours because of all the extra protocols and the intake. So we definitely have to take our, our time. And I think that's a habit that's going to be sticking around in our industry as well. So I really think the industry is about to to change um, for the better. I really do think it's about to change for the better, especially after people were locked in their houses for months and they realized how important uh, self-care and health and wellness is. Uh, I really think that our industry is going to be changing for the better um, in the near future. It's going to be a sticky transition, but I, I really think now's the time out with the old and with the new sort of mentality. So yeah. I'm excited to see yeah. how it unfolds. So I, I would I was going to ask you about sort of what changes you see coming to the field sort of from a global perspective. Is there anything in particular, like so increased time between mm -hmm. clients? That seems like it's a given. I'm really curious to see how the franchises handle that. Um, is there yes, anything, else you, anything else you see coming? Um, I see a lot more integrative, like health and wellness coming as well. I had mentioned, you know, whenever I renovate my little bus to turn into my little spa mobile, I plan on offering more therapies that are great for my clients that don't require me to actually put my hands on people like compression boot therapy, mm. which I love receiving. Oh my gosh. Uh, most cryotherapy clinics have it. So if you have a cryotherapy clinic in your city, check them out. They're awesome. But leg compression boots, uh, LED light therapy, maybe oxygen treatments, like salt therapy. There's so many different things that we can implement in our practice 
to give an overall wellness uh, package to our customers. And I think more clients are going to want to become uh, like support local businesses and have memberships and have an overall, not just a massage or a facial, but have a complete package for themselves. I really do think people are going to be prioritizing the health and wellness, but you know, we're in a special position to where we can be creative and deliver all of that to our ideal clients as a complete package, as opposed to just seeing one client one time, you know, on a, on a gift card from their birthday or, or only whenever they got in a wreck at the, you know, and, and they have to get therapy, like from the chiropractor or something. And you only see them like six times for a treatment. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of clients are really going to start um, valuing health and wellness a lot more. And since a lot of therapists have already coronavirus, what it did for our industry too, is people that had one foot out the door. And I actually include myself in that category almost because I was miserable in my office. I, I didn't have the freedom I had desired to really do what I wanted to do. I feel like coronavirus really pushed out the people who had one foot out the door to either completely quit and get out of the industry or completely pivot their business. I'm one of the ones that chose to pivot my business to downsize and to do something completely different than most people in my state. So it really helps you put your priorities first. And that's why I think this industry is uh, is going to be changing for the better out with the old in with yeah. the new uh, yeah. way of thinking and in with charging for charging like premium for your services because people are willing to pay for what they you know, for what they value. And right. that's why I'm curious about how the franchises are going to do too. But there's there's no shortage of, of clients, especially now that a lot of therapists are out of the field. It's just an abundant, even more of an abundance of clients for other people who did take right. the opportunity to to really pivot. I can go on a soapbox about this all day though, so I won't keep well, rambling about it. Well, it sounds like you've, certainly with your pivot and transitioning to sort of a new style for yourself, you've mean to, you've been very busy on your own, but I'm, I'm curious to see as a coach, as someone who advises other businesses, is there anything you've told them to focus on, to work it, to work on during the downtime? Yeah. So, um, a lot of women in my group, they are transitioning as well. So I'm in the same boat as them and I'm taking just as much advice from other people as I'm giving out, but there's a common theme. Everybody in the past month that I've coached or talked to on the phone, um, that they have asked my advice to ask them what their end goal is. And let's see, I talked about six or seven women and all of them, except for one said that they wanted to have a complete wellness center. And I think that's going to be the theme in our industry going back to, you know, uh, previously stated about offering full packages to clients. Um, people really, they want to start like wellness clinics and focus more on all aspects of the client's health and wellness and not just the the, you know, the muscular, you know, part that bothers us all. Um, so I think, I think that answers that question. Sorry, yeah, I'm like going sure. off on a ramble. Yeah, no, that's good. So, well, let me, let me just pick your brain for, for one second, if you don't mind. So th- something that you mentioned that I'm really interested in doing is leaving 60 minutes behind and only offering 90 minutes. Do you think that, is that going to be a, a difficult thing to convince people of? Like, I, I really believe in that. And I, I, that's kind of the way I want my practice to be going forward. What do you, what would you say to me about making that transition? Anybody who has a client who's never tried 90 minutes, give them 90 minutes. They're not going to go back to 60. It's so easy yeah. to convert those people over. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm only accepting clients who want at least 90 minutes because I take a lot of pride and care and I don't rush through things. Mm-hmm. Um, if they want a 60 minute massage, that's awesome. That's why I have an employee to take those appointments for me. But in this industry, um, male, female, newbie, massage veteran, you have to set boundaries. And I'm at the point where I've been doing this for a decade and I don't want to work seven days a week anymore. I was exhausted and burnt out. I only want to work with my ideal clients. I don't want to take a client just because I have an electricity bill to pay. You know, I really want to focus on my own health and wellness as well. So I do only want to work two, three days a week and spend the rest um, as off time and I'm in the position I am able to do that. But I do think that people are going to be, you know, buying more memberships and just getting back to basics and looking for a one-stop shop, basically. It's with everything being super convenient these days, especially after coronavirus, groceries being delivered, everything, you know, uh, online memberships. I really think that people are going to prioritize and they're just going to make things simple for themselves and really prioritize what's the most important you know, for their, 
for their time and wellness in that moment. And I, I really think we had the upper hand. Um, yeah. And even though our industry is the industry that, that got uh, most, I think like during the coronavirus, I really think it's going to lead to uh, to better things for most mm. people if they have the the drive and the ambition and the resilience to to pivot and really change their, their business model. A lot of my members have gone from doing body work to doing more meditation sessions and mm. to doing more uh, like, you know, tarot readings or Reiki or other services or online yoga. It's been, it's been really awesome seeing how creative people can get in this industry. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. So, so with, with over 10 years of experience as a practitioner, what would you say to someone, maybe a newer therapist as, as it pertains to longevity, like how to, how to have a long, healthy, you know, viable career? Sure. Well, the first thing is actually your mindset. You know, a lot of people get into this field thinking that they're going to make 80 grand a year and they don't. And then they burn out, they work at franchises. So I think not having a clear goal of what you want uh, is what sets up a lot of people for failure to start with. If they make it past that point, obviously we all learn body mechanics in school. But one thing that I see a lot of therapists doing, and I do this too, because I can't always access the classes that I want. Um, just taking really good CE classes that you're interested in, not exactly what your state approves, because you can always take some BS online CEU course mm. to get your your license hours, uh, like I do in Louisiana. But the classes that I've taken in the past four or five years are not imp- not approved in Louisiana. That doesn't mean I can't practice them. It just means I can't use those classes to renew for my license. So I'm taking classes that sets me apart from most people in my industry in Louisiana, which means when people search for that online, I'm one of the only people that come up for it. And then uh, my main example being cupping therapy, specifically fire cupping therapy. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows me as the OG, you know, mother cupper, I say. And even on Facebook, like right before we got on the phone, I had two people tag me in a post on cupping therapy. Yeah. Um, So using something like cupping or a good tool really saved my hands and it helped like if it wasn't for cupping therapy I would not be in this industry to start off with because what's our average like six seven years max I think in this field that might even be generous honestly yeah so I I love I love using cupping and hot stones and tools I know a lot of therapists are like you're not a real therapist if you use tools that's such a bs statement so use whatever you need to use to get the client results period you know what your ideal clients are I don't use tools a lot either but find well, something that will save your hands and, you know, extend your career, like have a niche. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I actually saw that you were a, a fire cupping specialist, as it were. And I wanted to ask you about it because I only I didn't get fire cups, but I just got my first cupping set to start learning about it and experimenting with them. They're just it's just a vacuum. You've probably yes. seen some style before, too. Ho- hopefully that that meets your approval. <laughs> Yes, I will. I'll definitely have to, uh, I'll message you about it after, but I, uh, I have some like really awesome training videos for my staff. So I'm more than, yeah, I'm more than happy uh, to share that with you. Um, I, I just know everything about cupping and I actually have a link, uh, to some free resources on cupping therapy. So I can send you the link for your audience so they can access my recommended like products and stock photos and intake forms and all that fun stuff. I love it. But, uh, yeah, cupping is great. Could you just give me the quick, because I only just started learning about it and already people are like, oh, what's that? Could you just give me the quick, like the what, the what and why cupping sure. elevator pitch? Sure. So what I tell my clients is the ancient therapy for modern ailments. It's been around for about 4,000 years. Uh, some texts say 3,000, some say four, whatever. Way before we were alive, it's been around since ancient civilizations, but Cupping therapy is essentially an inverse massage. It's a vacuum therapy that gets three times deep into the tissue in half the time. And results la- have lasted uh, two or three times longer than a typical massage as far as pain relief. So pretty much what cupping does, it takes, a sh- you know, it loosens the shrink wrap on your body, mm. which is, of course, our fascia. Like, we know what it is. But talking to a client, you kind of want to be like, hey, it takes the shrink wrap off your body. It makes everything feel not tight. And then you're able yeah. to get deeper into the tissue and instead of pushing like down on somebody's neck, you're pulling it up. So you're really, you know, um, I don't want to use the word like unadhering. I don't even know if that's the word, but you're helping to, you know, increase blood and lymph circulation throughout the body to speed up, you know, to speed up the uh, healing of the tissues and to bring, you know, fresh blood to the area. I love so, it. That's great. Awesome. 
It does look like you've been hugged by an octopus though. So that's, (laughs) so that's the, uh, that's the off thing. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for, for being on the Massage Hodge podcast. I really appreciate your time. And I will link up to your bod- uh, badass body workers website and Vita Pura if anyone wants to check that out. And we can chat for another few minutes after this recording. But thanks so much for being here. Sounds good. Bye, guys. <laughs> thanks.